Good morning. morning. Welcome to United Church of Hyde Park. Um, For our pastor is on vacation this week with Josiah, so we have a number of us filling in this morning. And most importantly of all, we have a guest preacher, Reverend Michelle Hughes. Um, Michelle is the former Associate Conference Minister for Vitality, Transformation, and Sustainability. A long term, yeah, okay. For the um, Illinois Conference of United Church of Hyde Park, uh, United Church, United Church of Christ. <laughs> and um, it says she had many years of experience in interim ministry. We won't say um, So we welcome Michelle today. And we have a few other announcements. For those of you here in person who have braved the rain, you may have noticed a few changes around. The state fire marshal, in preparation for the daycare center beginning, we hope, in September, has mandated that we need to have a couple of fire walls and new fire doors. So we hope you will bear with the inconvenience as we get ready for a new era of providing daycare and taking good care that the children will not be any danger of fire. So we have to satisfy all those requirements. Today is Communion Sunday. So I hope everyone picked up their element. Everybody has one? And those of you at home can prepare for Communion. Um, We want to say happy birthday to Mary Lou Manning. She's celebrating her birthday today. And Mary Lynn will be celebrating her special day on August 10th. So we're wishing both of them days filled with happiness and a year filled with joy. Save the date. On August 20th, Tracy Lampkins will host a lovely lawn day and plan giveaway. She will let us have further details in the future. Youth camp again this year. We've received uh, $1,802.76 in donations. So donations can be made by sending the check to United Church of Hyde Park with Youth Project in the memo line, or you may sponsor one of our campers for $120. So we hope that we raise enough so all those who want to can participate in camp. If you read in the newsletter, Wei Jin is doing a filming production, What's Your Concern About Our World? And if you would like to participate, please see Reverend Wei Jin after worship. Our special offering for August is the Pastor's Emergency Fund which provides special needs that arise from time to time for members and friends of our church family. So those are the announcements for today, and we welcome everyone, and let us worship together.
Uh, please stand and join us in the call to worship. Is that your job? Please stand and join me in the call to worship. We are people who have been called to follow where God leads us. By faith, we can obey, even when asked to walk into an unknown future. We are people who have been challenged to tell God's story to others. By faith, we have the ability to share the good news. We are God's children who are invited to feast at the table of grace. By faith, we will embrace our sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing, Come and Find the Quiet Center, which is on the insert in your bulletin. In Christ, we have a God who walks with us, eats with us, mourns with us, dances a joyful dance with us. God in Christ is present in us and all around us. Let us honor God in one another by saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace. So when they come back, <laughs> then you do your scripture yes. reading.
Save in your hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt, they do abominable deeds. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise. They have all gone astray. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. Have they no knowledge? as all as the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread. There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You will confound the plans of the poor. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come for Zion. When the Lord, res when the Lord restores the for fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. The scripture readings continue with Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you, may be strengthened in your inner being and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in this church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, good morning, and thank you, Yazi. That was a beautiful reading, and thank all the worship leaders. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful music. It is my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thee, O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Today's psalm reminds us, as theologian Walter Brueggemann said, when God is not honored, creaturely life disintegrates and denigrates. The end result is a life filled with terror. When we are foolish enough to believe that nothing is sacred, that there is nothing holy, that there is no God, the result is a life of fear and emptiness. 
That's what the psalmist was talking about. And when I was a student at Illinois State University, I was in the interdenominational choir, and there was a popular gospel song based on this psalm. The fool said in his heart, there is no God, there is no God, there is no God. But then the song, like our New Testament reading, assures us of God's presence and power. The song goes on to say, God is a spirit. We worship him in spirit and truth. Just like the wind that keeps blowing, we cannot see it, but we feel it move. There is a God. There is a God, almighty God. Today, our gospel reading assures us that life rooted in love and sacred spirit can take us to places we dare not even dream. A life rooted in love can provide life without being anxious or fearful, a life that leads us to places of restoration. So once again, we return to Paul's words where he probably wrote to the Ephesians from a prison cell, perhaps with no more than a single beam of light penetrating a thick brick wall into his cell. All is dark, and Paul's condition was desolate and ripe with conditions that would cause most people to give up and to be filled with despair. But instead, what's so interesting, he writes in this predicament, his response is not, oh, woe is me. But in this moment, he points us towards something sacred beyond ourselves. Again, let us hear this text from the Living Bible Translation. When I think about the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall down on my knees and pray to the Father of all the great family of God, some of them already in heaven and some right down here on earth, that out of God's glorious, unlimited resources will give you the mighty inner strengthening of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go deep down into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand, as all God's children should, how long how wide, how deep, and how high this love really is. And to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at least, at last, you will be filled up with God himself. End of the reading. Now, early in this same text, Paul had just been going over with the Ephesians the wonderful fact that the gospel of Jesus Christ had been opened not just to the Jewish people from whose history salvation had come, but also to the Gentiles, which was shorthand for everyone on earth. Paul is still writing to a people divided along lines of ethnicity and history. Paul is still writing to a people so used to the corrupt people of the world having their way. Paul is still writing to a people who might be wondering if any of this even matters at all. Paul is still writing for those who might be wondering, is there any merit in doing good? He's writing for those who wonder about the existence of the sacred. And Paul answers by asserting the certainty of his faith, by telling the Ephesian how he prays for them, and even knowing their plight. He doesn't pray for their victory over their enemies, and he does not even pray that they will be healthy and safe. He does not pray that they be successful or wealthy. He doesn't even pray that they will find a way to stand up to the political foes in the Roman Empire. 
He doesn't pray that they might experience their best life now. No, he simply prays for strength in the spirit to bring Christ more fully into their hearts. And then he prays that they might receive power, but not political power. No, he prays that they may receive power to grasp something hard to grasp. He prays that they receive the power to understand how wide and how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. He prays believing that by knowing that they are a part of God's design, by knowing they are loved, by knowing that they are connected to every other living thing, by knowing who holds the future, he prays believing by knowing that the universe bends towards justice and light. He knows that if people can embrace this truth, their empty spaces will be filled. Their courage will be restored. Their resolve will be deepened. And so it is with us. In 1952, a British scripture scholar and translator, J.B. Phillips, wrote a book with the provocative title, Your God is Too Small. He said, the trouble with many people today is that they have not, a found, they have not found a God big enough for their modern needs. I think he was right. If Phillips were writing today, he might title the book, your God is too small and too distant. I believe he would say the challenge for many people today is finding a God who is big enough to embrace the world and close enough to feel their inner emptiness. So this morning I have come to tell you I believe that too many of us do have a God that is too small a God that is bound by our traditions, a God that is too small, a God that is wrapped up in our flag, a God that is too small, a God that looks like us and likes what we like, a God that is too small, a God preoccupied with your wealth rather than peace and justice, a God that is too small, a God that is in our image. A small God, the small God that we fashioned is narrow and tame and does nothing surprising or amazing anymore and is boxed in by our preconceptions. This, this small God is stingy with mercy and only has enough love for people like us, our kind of people, our nation, our tribe our family, our social class, even our denomination. And this, this small God of our own making is predictable, safe, and yes, I'm going to say it, boring. And sadly, our faith in so many places has become safe, predictable, and boring. But here, Paul tries to shift our gaze, inviting us to realize how long, how wide, how deep, and how high this love God offers really is. Because we need our experience, our idea of the holy to be up close and personal. A small, predictable, distant God leaves us feeling overwhelmed by change and threatened by emptiness. A distant God way off can't do anything about the emptiness that threatens us. That's the awesome thing about our tradition, about the word becoming flesh. Through Christ, God was no longer distant, but right here on earth, being subject 
to all the temptation and grief and hunger and anger and loneliness and judgment and persecution and abandonment that we face but still being firmly connected to the holy at the same time. My friends, we all live through seasons which demand more than we can possibly deliver. Work grinds on, but our energy leaves us. Needs pile up, but we're at risk of caving in. Opportunities multiply, but, but we feel divided. Our schedule is jammed full, but our hearts are alarmingly empty. Maybe that's how you might feel right now. You're way over your emotional limits. You're at risk of losing yourself. You might feel most days it's just enough to get out of bed, to put on your responsibility, our mask of habit, and our armor of protection, and just do what you have to do. And you might feel emptied out this morning. And so often we will feel that emptiness with, with noise, always having the, the TV on, or, or food, eating, even though we're not really hungry finding ways to numb ourselves with whatever provides just a little temporary relief and help you to get through and do it again the next day. Well, a small distant God can't help you with that. But a God, a big God, so big and so deep and so wide that has lived our humanity alongside us. Oh, can do that, only a God that is so multidimensional that we can literally take this God, this experience, this concept of the holy inside of our minds, take it inside of our spirits, and as we will do today with communion, literally take it inside of our very bodies. That can pull us through. And thankfully, as prayer, Paul's prayer to the Ephesians, Christians reminds us, we don't have a small and distant God. We don't have a limiting God. We don't have a boring God. We don't have a predictable God. We have a sacred presence that is as close to us as our own breath. Through today's text, we are encouraged to reach out to the Holy One, what Bishop Shelby Spong called the ground of all being. And we are assured that our, our longing, our emptiness, will be filled with unlimited resources that will give you the mighty inter, inner strengthening of the Holy Spirit. You know that, that inner strength, that trouble don't last always. You know that inner strength to know that faith, real faith, is believing in spite of the evidence and then watching the evidence change. The inner strength to know that in Christ even death doesn't have the last word. It gives us the assurance to know that there is a power in the universe greater than governments. There was a power in the universe greater than war machines. There is a power in the universe greater than lies wrapped in shiny false hope. So friends, my prayer for you today is that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant that your inner strength become even stronger with that power, a power so big and so intimate that you walk through this life bursting with miracle-making possibility. So much, as Paul says, that you are filled up with God itself feeling connected to every living being and being moved with compassion when souls suffer. 
I close with these words of scripture. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand. Now, glory be to God, who by God's mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. May it be so. Amen. As a faith community, we participate in the long, the wide, the <laughs> deep, the unpredictable love of God. Now is our opportunity to contribute our financial gifts to strengthen the ministry and mission of United Church of Hyde Park. Will the ushers please come forward? Beautiful 
Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather today to hear the words of wisdom from Michelle, to hear the music so joyously prepared for us. We appreciate the gifts that you have given us and are glad that we're able to contribute to the ministry and mission of our congregation. Continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may manifest the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and patience in our daily lives and in our time together. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the God we love. Gracious God, you have created a world of abundance and flourishing. Every resource, every gift, every product originates from the generosity of your creation and the creativity you have bestowed upon us. Forgive us for misuse and overuse of your gifts. Reveal our miserly attitudes toward the plentiful trove of resources you have entrusted to our care. Sow generosity in us. Reveal abundance to us and enable flourishing through us. Amen. On the last night of his life, Jesus did something very unusual after dinner with his disciples. He gave them a process, a way to remember him. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you come together and eat this, remember that this is my body that you are taking into yourself. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So whenever you come together and take this cup, remember that you are drinking a part of me and taking me into yourself. What a powerful symbol Holy Communion has become. It's the heart of the Roman Catholic Mass. It's the heart of the Episcopal service. It's the heart of every Orthodox church service in the world. And every quarter at least, it is the heart of Protestant worship itself. We take his body, we take his blood into ourselves. Let us together now partake of these elements.
the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Take, eat, and celebrate him in your life as the center of your being. an amazing thing that we in this church in the same service of worship can understand through Jesus Christ that God is so big God's love is so wide so deep so broad that we can experience the fact that his eye is on a sparrow and he's watching you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to be in your presence and to invite you once again into our bodies and into our hearts. May your love reach into the depths of our souls, guide us and direct us, inspire us and keep us, and heal us and hold us all our life long. And may your son's life and death reveal how much you enter into every aspect, even the pain and the death that comes to all of us. This we pray in his spirit in his love. Amen. You going to do the community check-in? Oh, Anna Grace is going to do that. Charlene, if you're tuning in, I want you to notice that it's taking at least three of us to fill your <laughs> shoes today. Yes, it is. So as a community, as a people formed by the body of Christ, we care for one another. So we have a check-in each week. Are there joys or concerns, things you would like to share with the congregation? Weijin. Yeah, there are two things I want to share with you one. The first thing is Mina is on the plane back, back from Korea and to the United States. She will land it in California directly, and she wants me to pass a message that she miss everyone here. <laughs> so I also pray for her new journey in California. That's the first thing. The second thing is that after the service today, that all are welcome to come to me. We will try to fill a new film for our church. What concerns you about our world? So we can say maybe, uh, just simple words, maybe three sentences, or you can have your long essays about maybe 30 minutes if we find. We have enough battery for your opinions. We want to combine all our opinions to show our quite different understanding of the world concerns us and how can we figure out who can move forward together as a community together. So all are welcome to participate in this interesting video project together after the worship. Thank you. So Wei Jin, even though Mina is no longer with us, we pray for her and her well-being and wish her well in her new endeavors. And Wei Jin needs all of us to participate in a video to demonstrate to the world what we are about. Come Holy Spirit. Are there other concerns? 
Judy. We, we, all, uh, share, we all share the concern for so many people who have lost their homes due to fire and flood. Yes, our worldly catastrophes seem to continue and to get greater and greater, and we do pray for those who are suffering from fire and flood. Come Holy Spirit. I just wanted to say thank you to my mother who has been very generous with the use of her car because <laughs> I had an accident and thank you Jade for bringing up the prayers I, I was bright siding everything but a lot of stress came after that and uh, turning to the Lord you know and just giving it up to God there's nothing I can do about it so I really appreciate the prayers and I appreciate my mother <laughs> nice Edith is thanking her mother and others for prayers and help as she recovers from vehicle. Come Holy Spirit. Hear our prayers. Okay. This yes. is a joy. My name is Patricia Breckenridge. I've been a member of a church since 2009. My joy is for you to view Felicia Beverly, F-E-L-I-S-H-A Beverly. It's a possibility that we all have been beneficiaries of a trust according to the CES, uh, KV Act of 1666. So just viewing her video and just um, researching the Act of 1666, say KV, he who lives, you might wanna do some research and find out if your inheritance is um, needing to be um, recouped from the IRS. So be sure to research Felicia Beverly, F-E-L-I-S-H, Beverly, B-E-V-E-R-L-A. I'm praying that this is credible and it's God sent. May peace be with you. Amen. Thank you, Patricia. Come Holy Spirit. I just want to ask prayers from everybody. First off, thank everybody that has donated to camp and ask for continued prayers. So we're planning and getting ready and people will be gathering all their things. We're going next Monday, not tomorrow, but that next Monday. So this is kind of our crunch time as we get everything planned and all the packing and just ask for prayers for guidance as we do so, so that we can all have a, um, a really great trip. So thank you. Tracy reminds us that they're getting ready for camp. And uh, I think as a congregation, we want to express our appreciation to Tracy for helping to make this come about. So come Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you as a community thankful for all the gifts that you have given us, hoping that you will continue to strengthen us as we move forward, as we pray the prayer that you taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, please stand and join us in our closing hymn, number 451, Be Thou My Vision.
God as you go about your week. Remember how big your God is. May the love of God surround you, the peace of God dwell in you, and the justice of God compel you. Go in peace and amen.